Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr, and this week we're going to be reading Annie and the Lizard Man. Uh, last week uh, was String Bottom, and I sort of enjoyed the uh, sort of light-hearted or, you know, light-toned fantasy story, and so I decided to sort of keep along those lines. You could consider these in the same world, I suppose, uh, and, although there isn't any direct uh, connection between them, at least not yet. And yes, yeah, it was a lot of fun to write, and hope you enjoy it. This is, of course, the uh, visual version that I do for YouTube, and then I will clean up the audio, and it will go out as a podcast, and it'll be on iTunes and so on. Uh, if it give if you watch this and on YouTube, give us a like uh, and subscribe. I do a, a new story every week, and here we go. Annie and the Lizard Man. Take this to it. Cook said. Annie, assistant in the kitchen and only eight years old, was thin with straight brown hair and dark eyes that looked as if fright was their natural state. She looked at Cook. Cook had a name, but she used it so seldom she had forgotten it. Oh, okay, Cook. Cook, with one beefy hand, held down a big bowl to her, a pot, really, since it had handles, which she had to use both hands to control. She looked down at the basic stew. She knew where to go, but she really wasn't looking forward to it. She had occasionally taken a meal to the dungeons, but they generally gave it to someone stronger, older, and she had never, ever delivered anything to it before. However, a fever had gripped the town, and both of the older boys who usually took its dinner were ill, so it was up to her. The stone walls of the kitchen constantly rang with the noises of a big kitchen. This kitchen fed the king and many of the people within the walls of the castle. Not that it was much of a castle, it was mostly just a single keep, four towers connected by straight walls, and then the outer castle wall around that. Inside the walls were a good number of people, which is basically a small town. The king, is it right to call a man a king if he isn't really one, was the kind of man who kept the peace with blood sports, King Leopold. He had a stable of men and creatures to fight. But there was only one it. Half man, half lizard... It was in the deepest cell of Leopold's dungeon-cum-gladiator pen. There really wasn't much difference. Almost everyone who went into Leopold's dungeon entered the gladiator ring sooner or usually just sooner. Leopold wasn't big on trials, except ones that end with by combat. According to King Leopold, nothing was more fun than watching an 80-year-old try to fend off a hungry tiger with a wooden sword. Annie was terrified. She had never been anywhere near the lizard man's cell, though she knew where it was. It had been pointed out to her by one of the guards, Scarred Tom, who loved to scare all the kids who brought food down. The full pot wasn't getting any lighter, and any delay was trouble. She left the kitchen and headed towards the dungeons. She wished the trip were longer, but in no time she was at the dungeon gate. That for the lizard man, Scarred Tom said, eyeing the big pot. A second guard, nicknamed Big Vern, said, He's in a foul mood today, little squirt. Be careful, or you'll be dessert. Both he and Tom laughed. The passage went straight, then bent left and started to slope down. The cell doors on both sides here had bars, and the prisoners leered at her, some of them making smacking noises and calling to her. Annie walked down the very center of the hallway, where, she knew, they would not be able to reach her. The pot was very heavy indeed now, but it was hot, so it would hurt to rest it for long against her belly as she walked, and she didn't want to set it down if she could help it. Picking it back up would feel even worse. Fortunately, even at her age, she had worked in the kitchens long enough to develop a tolerance for burns, so she decided to let the pot rest against her stomach, and though it hurt some, her arms and back were immediately relieved. The torches were fewer now, and the place felt very damp. The castle was near some very wet land, and wells did not need to be dug deep to hit water. The stone walls were not porous, however, or this dungeon would not exist. Still, the wa water won out in a hundred small ways. She felt as though she could almost swim in this air. The dimness was becoming oppressive now. She looked ahead. The end of the passage was just coming into view. There were two cells. The lizard man had the one on the left, and across from it was an empty cell, so she'd been told. She had no backup, so she walked up to the middle of the hall at the cells at the end. She was surprised to see that there was a man in the cell on the right. He said nothing to her, but was watching. He was older, with white hair and a stubble beard. He was short and 
thin, but seemed healthy. For now, she thought. The old ones never lasted long in the ring. She couldn't remember one so old being put so deep before. Perhaps this one wasn't destined for the ring. That would be a first. She turned away and looked instead at the lizard man. He would be six feet tall if he stood up straight, heavily muscled and with scales. He looked like a crocodile that could stand on two legs, though the mouth, while at much longer than that of most bipeds, was much shorter than a crocodile's. It was standing up now, holding the bars and looking at her. Go to the back of the cell so I can put your food down, she said as bravely as she could. The lizard man did not do it. Instead, it moved forward until it was up against the bars. It stared at her, and her heart was racing. She realized it was not going to back off, but she also couldn't just leave without giving it the food. She put the bowl down on the ground in front of her. Then she looked to see what the lizard man was doing. The bowl was pretty far. The lizard man just kept looking at her. She knelt down and, without taking her eyes off the lizard man, moved the bowl forward about a foot. The lizard man got on the ground and she scrambled back. She realized she was a little close to the cell behind her and moved so she was in the middle of the hall again. The lizard man reached out but couldn't grasp the bowl. Annie got down again, spun the bowl so one handle was towards her and the other was towards the lizard man and pushed it another foot. The lizard man reached out and she backed off a little but it was just slightly out of reach. Wary of the lizard man tricking her by not reaching its full extent, she moved the bowl again, this time just a few inches. The lizard man grasped the handle and pulled the bowl to the bars. There was a slot for food built into the door. It brought the bowl up to the slot and pulled it in. It then ate the stew noisily, slurping it in great swallows straight from the bowl. Nicely handled, the man behind her said. Annie froze. She turned around and the door to the cell behind her was open. However, the man was just standing there with an interested expression on his face. He made no move towards her, so she stood still. Annie said nothing. I'm looking for someone brave, someone smart. I'm thinking I finally just found her, the man said. I don't know what you're talking about, Annie said. Of course not, but you work in the kitchens? Annie nodded. Any prospects? Annie just shook her head. Do you know what prospects are? the man asked. Annie shrugged. I mean, is there any chance you will end up better than working in the kitchens all your life? Annie shook her head. Well, this is a chance for just that, the man said. I am Quareri. I will buy out your contract, and you will be my apprentice. Annie looked at him with one eyebrow raised. What will you teach me? she asked. Quareri smiled. Magic. And that's where we're going to end for today. I do want to continue uh, Annie's story into in, next week, so I will plan on writing more this week for the next episode. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. And uh, you can catch us on iTunes, and we always appreciate a review there as well. Uh, thanks for listening, and have a good week. Words and Music, copyright 2018, Cryptobiography, LLC, all rights reserved.